What's the probability of selecting one M&M out of this bowl and it being both blue and weighing over 1.8 grams? Today, we're looking at the answer to that specific question and talking about, in general, how do we calculate joint probabilities? When we talk about joint probability, we're talking about the probability that two events both happen. So I want the probability that I pull blue out of all of these six different colors of M&Ms and that that blue has a specific weight or a specific weight that exceeds a limit. If we split up our M&Ms to make sense of this, we'll start by having a whole pile of blue M&Ms and what's remaining in our bowl will be everything that's not blue. So I've started to pull some out, I could keep going with this. Then within the blue ones, I would take the time to weigh out each of these and segment them into two groups. Let's say these two weigh less than 1.8 grams and these weigh over 1.8 grams. These are all pieces of information that I'll need. And the easiest way to do this is to take this and to put it in a chart that explains what's happening with this data. I've gone ahead and counted all of this information and put it into the chart that's on the screen now. This information tells us the frequency of each of these events occurring. I can see how many times I have a blue M&M that's less than 1.8 grams, how many times I have a blue M&M that's over 1.8 grams, and then the same thing for all of the other colors. But we don't have exactly 100 M&Ms in this bowl. We have 159 M&Ms in this bowl. So we need to take that information that we've gathered on the frequency of each and divide it by our total population to be able to find out the probability because our probabilities always should add up to one. That is, no matter what we pick out of this bowl, we know that it's either going to be blue or not blue and it's either going to be over 1.8 grams or not over 1.8 grams. So the probability of us pulling out an M&M that is some color and weighs something is one or 100%. When we divide the frequencies in this table by the total number of M&Ms that we have in our population, we find that the probability of an M&M being both blue and over 1.8 grams is 0.0377 or 3.77%. We write this as the probability of A and B or probability of A intersection B. Let's look at how to use Excel to calculate joint probabilities. We're starting with the same data we've been using over the last few videos on statistics. This is all of the M&Ms from our bowl recorded by color and corresponding weight. To start out, we'll find the frequency. I'm setting up a table here with the colors, divided into blue and not blue, and the weights divided into less than or equal 1.8 grams and over 1.8 grams. I could count up the numbers in each category by hand since we don't have all that many data points in our set. However, most of the time we'll be dealing with a lot more data than this, so let's use formulas instead. I'm going to use the count ifs formula. It's similar to the count if formula we talked about when we looked at the probability formula, but it allows us to put in multiple conditions. The count ifs formula works similar to the count if formula. We start out by specifying the data we want to check, and then in the second position, we put our criteria. Then we repeat this with the third position being the next range of cells we want to check, and the fourth position being our criteria for those cells. You can repeat this over and over for multiple different criteria that you want to count at the same time. Here's our formula to count M&Ms that are blue and less than or equal to 1.8 grams. Notice that I haven't used cell references here for my criteria. You can do that if you're looking up specific values. So I could put in the cell reference where I've specified blue. However, since I want to specify any weight less than or equal to 1.8 grams, I need to hard code that criteria into my formula with my less than or equal indicator. I'll repeat this for each quadrant of our chart, making updates to each formula. 
For the not blue category, I'm using the criteria that the color is not equal to blue, denoted by a less than and greater than sign in front of my blue. I could do a more complicated nested formula to specify each of the colors specifically, or I could have made my chart to list the frequency of each individual color and the corresponding less than or equal to 1.8 grams and greater than 1.8 grams, and then sum the results for everything that wasn't blue at the end. I picked the not blue because it's the most straightforward for what we're calculating today. I'll add in totals here just to double check my results and make sure that I do add up to 159, which I know is the size of my sample. And it matches. Now I'll create a probability table. I'm just going to copy the frequency table I had and then update my formulas to take each result in my table and divide it by 159, which is that total of samples in the set of data we're working with. Again here, we'll check our totals to make sure that everything worked as we'd expect, and we do get a probability of 1 for everything, which is exactly what we want to see. That's how you figure out joint probability. Next week, we're going to look at conditional probabilities, or if I pick an M&M out of this bowl and I know it's blue, what's the probability that it also weighs over 1.8 grams? This conditional probability is different than joint probability, so come back next week to find out more about it. Thank you so much for watching.